Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Wednesday, March 7, 2018. In the news tonight, over two dozen persons homeless as fire raises four buildings in Kitty. Government is ensuring all juvenile correctional facilities are properly functioning. ExxonMobil decides to explain why Guyana will receive a 2% royalty. And in court, Alvin Reed freed of murder charge. With the details of these and other stories, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Now for the news and details. Over 25 persons rendered homeless after four homes in Pike Street Kitty were destroyed in an early morning fire. Several government ministers responded to the victims and donated a quantity of materials. Nikhil John, who was there and filed this report. The fire raised through the buildings in quick succession, even as firefighters battle with the flames. The five victims were not able to save much of their material possessions. However, all made it out alive. One of the affected persons said he was awakened by the blaze, which was next door. The man said he managed to collect his suitcase and some documents, which were already packed because he was leaving the country in a couple of days. So my documents, travel documents and so, it been a tad reach. So I, could, I just turned on my phone light, got my phone on the bed, pick up the computer, Pick up my travel documents, my bag, and I exit the house. The Guyana Fire Service responded to the fire. However, they were unable to put out the blaze as it was uncontrollable. The man also claims that when the firefighters arrived, one of the engines broke down, while the other came with half of its tank empty. They tried to get access to one the uh, fire hydrant by the corner there. So when I go to the corner there, People them tell them that oh, don't don't think that because they're gonna flood out the yard. The police had to go and make them open open the fire hydrant, help the police. By the time though, this house the water, the fire don't start catching there. And after the breeze make a thing, come back and catch it. I tell him the, the guy when he get the water, I say, Mom, save this house because this house they no catching. I tell him I save this house. But I guess he didn't he didn't get an orders from somebody else because they call you away from here. Meantime, Minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources, Simona Brooms, has assisted one family by placing them in her home until they can get back on their feet. That family consists of three children and their mother, who is a single parent. You got to move off some of these um, rubbish and so on, and at least you can start, you can understand. But so um, I know she might have relatives and families and friends. But I personally, and I'm going to put a call also out on my Facebook page. Because when these things happen to people, yeah, um, you could give a bed a mattress money, but, you know, any little material that she can get, the cement block, even if it's the board, wrong a little room, and being there with her kids, um, I think it, it, it will go far away. Also chipping in was Minister of Social Protection, Amna Ali, who visited the five victims this morning and handed out some hampers. We are on the ground here to do an assessment of how many people suffered and so that we can provide help. Meanwhile, meanwhile as an interim thing, we have brought some clothing for the various families because clothing is important and many of them were not able to save anything uh, to wear. But by this afternoon, we are going to be able to provide additional help for the, 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 the victims. Minister Ali also promised the affected persons that she will return later during the day to hand out some other items. Also, a team from the Ghana Relief Council was present at the location and was assessing the needs of the victims. The council said they will be making a donation on Friday to the victims. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali asserts that the government is currently taking active measures to ensure the proper functioning of all of the nation's juvenile and adult correctional facilities. Details in this Lashana Gomes-Kinilis report. 
One such facility is that of the new Opportunity Corps, now a responsibility of the Ministry of Social Protection. Minister Ali exclaimed that the welfare of the nation's people are of a major concern to the current administration, and having efficient and relevant facilities in place to help with such a mission is of utmost importance. Government is taking care of all the sections of people, whether they are juveniles or whether they are they are in, incarcerated in prisons, wherever. But we do have programs. We have the Child Protection Agency that deals with some. We have the New Opportunity Corps that deals with another category. And so government has a plan um, and has been, you know, executing um, various programs in connection with uh, these defaulters. When questioned about the government's capacity to implement measurable strategies important to the efficient functioning of all juvenile correctional facilities in the country, this was Minister Ali's response. The government has capability of dealing with anything in this country. Because we suffered for too long and now our programs are, ge are geared in order to facilitate you know, the things that are happening in the country. The New Opportunity Corps, NOC, over the years has been troubled with occurrences of breakouts by juveniles who were housed there while receiving the necessary guidance and educational support in turning their lives around. Back in September 2017, the New Opportunity Corps was breached when four juveniles escaped. At that time, efforts were made to rectify those breaches. In wake of the incident, concerns were raised regarding the need for structural improvements of the juvenile facility located at Underneeman Esequibo. In addition to that, in early February, the NOC was rocked with further debilitating issues as a senior official of the institute was being accused of covering up several instances of sexual activity occurring between juveniles and staff members of the facility. However, Minister Ali had laid those allegations to rest. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. ExxonMobil has again explained the reasons for the 2% royalty in Guyana's case as against those royalties in other oil-producing countries in the world. Nicole John who filed this report. Senior Director of Public and Government Affairs of ExxonMobil Guyana, Kimberly Brissenton, during an interview, explained that the 2% royalty Guyana received from the negotiation was a bonus. Brissenton said, the other amendments in the contract signed in 2016 was not mandatory by ExxonMobil because the 1999 agreement was binding. However, because the country was entering into a new sector, the company thought it best to make the amendments. The ExxonMobil official said the royalties that are in the contracts signed by oil producing countries around the world varies which depends on the way a government may negotiate. Royalties are not the same across the board in the way they're applied. So in the case of Guyana, we have a production sharing agreement, a PSC or PSA, where Guyana receives much of its revenue from the sharing of profits made from selling the oil. And the royalty here in Guyana is an add-on, it's a bonus. It's not typically a feature of a petroleum sharing contract around the world. Brissenton further explained that in the Guyana's case, the government enjoys both a production sharing agreement and the 2% royalty. In the case of Ghana, that oil producing country has a sharing of crude oil agreement with ExxonMobil, which stands at 12.5%. That royalty is paid to the state after the oil is sold by ExxonMobil at world market price. In the case of Guyana, Brissenton said the 2% royalty will be paid up front on each barrel of oil sold at world market price. Uh, and so in countries like Ghana, they don't use petroleum sharing agreements. They have what's called a tax and royalty regime where the country gets all of the revenue from taxes and royalty. So as a result, the royalty needs to be higher to ensure the country makes enough money off the sale of the oil. And so in those cases, the operator would sell all of the oil. 
and then pay taxes on that oil, and that's how the government gets revenue, in addition to the royalty. So they're different contracts, it's different mechanisms. So they're not comparable in and of themselves as standalone components. Since the government released the ExxonMobil contract signed in 2016, critics have been bashing the oil giant for giving Guyana a mere 2% royalty. The company has taken to its social media platform to explain in detail why the 2% royalty was given to Guyana and how the country will benefit as production starts in early 2020. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. At OptiVision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations in Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Pio's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> At GPTI, quality customer service is our number one goal. That's why with our 24-hour depository facility, you can deposit your end-of-day sales at your convenience. Visit any of our branches to sign up for our night depository service. GBTI, your friend, your bank. Looking for fresh, tender, and flavorful meat? Then check out Rosignol Butchery for steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and chicken. For a tasty, attractive cocktail, we have a wide variety of packaged deli meats and cheeses to decorate your platter. We also stock a wide assortment of canned goods, seasoning salts, sauces, and marinade. All in a highly hygienic, welcoming atmosphere with warm and welcoming staff to cater to all your needs. Rosignol Butchery, we meet your needs. 70 74 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone number 223 You're still with News Update. Welcome back. The A Division community policing groups are taking credit for assisting investigators in dismantling the carjacking group. Details on this Nickel John to report. Administrator of the community policing groups, Derek Pompey, has commended those members of the groups for the work that they would have done to crack the carjacking ring. He noted that despite the long period of carjacking without any arrest, members of the CPGs in A Division have made the success. Encourage them to get involved in that. Now, if you could recall, a few weeks ago we had a carjacking ring that was dismantled. That was mainly because of community policing um, giving information and led the way so that these persons could have been apprehended. Minister of Public Security Kamaraj Ramjitan is pleased with the work done thus far in dismantling the carjacking ring. He noted that more persons should join the CPGs because they would be the ideal persons 
to identify the crimes that are being committed. But that more can be done by the community, people like yourselves and a lot of others becoming involved. What I find happening is that the more educated of the lot within the communities who could understand domestic violence, who could understand suicide prevention, who can help in so many social projects, and who also have the financing to help plug a better system are not coming forward. Uh, it is the, uh, the, the, there are lots of people here who have tried and pleaded with those um, members and they're not coming forward. More than 10 vehicles were recovered by ranks of the Ghana Police Force within a short period last month. Several persons were arrested and charged and were placed before the magistrate's court. Those who were arrested included an ex-policeman and several women. Investigators are still looking for more persons who may be involved in the illegal trade. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Ghana Teachers Union continues to champion the call for teachers to obtain a salary increase. However, the union's proposal of a 40% increase is yet to be approved by Cabinet. Here is more in the Skippany Jordan report. During an exclusive interview with the General Secretary of the Guyana Teachers Union, Coretta MacDonald, news update learned that talks are on the way to have teachers' salaries increased. MacDonald mentioned that the GTU would have asked for a 40% increase. The General Secretary claimed the union is pushing for the increase due to the economic changes and challenges within the school system. This is about a group of people who are interested in education and not only interested in education but interested in the people who have to deliver. And so we started working as one entity with the interest of, of teachers and the pupils, as a matter of fact, uh, the country in a whole at large. And so the work of the task force has been progressing. GTU is quite pleased with the manner in which the, the discussions have been going and we are almost through with our discussions, in, well not with the discussions in terms of wrapping up our report which is going to be submitted to the Minister, the minister of Education who will so defend at cabinet level. Despite an increase is expected, it should not be exorbitant but enough so that teachers can be able to live comfortably. We've asked for uh, risk allowances because we recognize that some of our teachers are working under um, severe conditions. Um, those who work in the special schools, those who are working way out in the riverine areas, and there is no, um, there is no provisions made for them. And so we've been asking, we've asked in this proposal for risk allowances for um, teachers. We've also asked for a new one, um, stress allowances, because we recognize that head teachers and deputy head teachers, um, the work has been increasing with every day that passes. And so outside of the administrative duties that they have to perform and, and regular duties as a head teacher, head teachers are now tasked with being um, counselors, judge, and more uh, work is being pushed on head teachers. In October last, the government agreed to pay teachers an interim salary increase ranging from 68% retroactive to January 1, 2017. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Guyana is putting up its guard to protect residents, especially those living in villages bordering other countries, against the transportation of any disease. As such, Guyana is looking to achieve universal coverage of vaccination by the year 2021. Sandy Ramutar has more. Guyana's quest to have universal access to vaccination comes as neighboring countries are being plagued with outbreak of diseases. The immunization process is aligned with the Global Vaccine Action Plan, which seeks to promote equitable access to vaccination. Minister within the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummings, says it is vital for citizens to be secure. As such, a 2017-2021 plan has been put in place to ensure there is universal coverage of vaccination. Vaccines are used to stimulate the immune system in the body to protect a person against subsequent infection or disease. Guyana has established a multi-year plan, 2017 to 2021, for achieving improved immunization coverage across the country. 
key to achieving universal vaccination coverage is the availability and optimal utilization of adequate human resources. In this regard, strategic efforts are being undertaken to strengthen our human resources through continuous capacity building initiatives that will ensure our immunization staff are properly trained, adequately skilled, and capable of effectively executing their duties. Dr. Cummings says the plan will trigger more home visits, capacity building, and sensitization across communities. Also critical to achieving universal vaccination coverage is the unhindered access to remote areas of the country. You know them very well. Through better intersectoral coordination, and we're thankful for the network we have now, enhanced transportation and logistical systems supported by robust public communication strategy, more persons will have access to vaccines. Guyanese are urged to be on the guard and comply with healthcare personnel to ensure they're not prone to any disease. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Coming up, our Chris Ron continues to belittle Guyana's oil contract and GTU calls for more welfare officers to be available. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood.
This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil has again been criticized about the contract which was signed two years ago. The outspoken chartered accountant Christopher Ram is behind the latest bashing. Here is more from Nikhil Jondo. Chartered accountant Christopher Ram believes that the contract entered into by the government and ExxonMobil is flawed. He also believes that the stability clause is also flawed in that the government cannot impose any new petroleum-related fiscal obligation. The stability clause also states that the contract cannot change if the government enacts or amends new laws that may affect the economic benefits to the company. It also states that if the new laws or amendments affect their economic benefits, then the government will have to take affirmative action to restore the lost or impaired economic benefits to the company. In the case in Israel, where a 10 year stability clause was ruled as unconstitutional by the Israeli court, despite the presence and the argument by Prime Minister Netanyahu that security considerations required such a clause. Senior Director of Public and Government Affairs of ExxonMobil. Kimberly Brissenton explained that the company worked along with the government model which was presented to them in 2012. Brissenton said the company had nothing to lose when they signed the contract in 2016. She stressed that both parties have gained from the agreement. We were able to secure more time to explore so we could do it in a more thoughtful, measured manner. Um, and in return for that, in any negotiation, the government was able to procure more out of the deal as well in the 2% royalty, which none of the other contracts that have been released today have, um, and the signing bonus and the higher payments that we talked about. And so both parties got something out of it. And we could have stayed with the 1999 agreement. It was valid, and we would be fine to be no different than we are right now today, except the contract released in the public, what have been is good. And so, uh, you know, I feel like, um, I feel like we're in a good place right now. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The issue of violence in the school system is still around and needs to be nipped in the bud, says the Guyana Teachers Union. In light of this, the union calls for more welfare officers to assess the behavior of children. Here is more in the Skippany Jordan report. This newscast met with the General Secretary of the Guyana Teachers Union, Coretta MacDonald, and discussed some issues affecting teachers. Among the topics discussed was violence in schools, often against teachers. She mentioned that the police is contacted in most instances and the welfare department is involved. However, she claims they are not well equipped to handle these situations due to the meager number of welfare offices. Well, we still have in school um, some teachers who are there and can offer that kind of service without being paid for it. Eh? Um, and uh, we, we've been asking for some time that we should have counselors in every school. Of course, um, we, we know there are financial implications, but if we want things to happen, then we've got to start um, stop thinking about how much it's going to cost us because at the end of it, we will benefit. We are going to have less issues to deal with if we invest in having um, counselors in, in, in our schools. McDonald stated that while the welfare department is trying their utmost, in some cases, the children remain the same. GTU's General Secretary reiterated that there is a need for trained professionals who are well equipped to deal with these challenges since teachers are already burdened with other tasks assigned to them on a daily basis. But I would want to say that um, quite a lot coming out of our talks with the, the senior officers at the Ministry of Education, uh, there is work in progress and we are hoping that um, things are going to happen differently coming from the welfare section so that our teachers can feel comfortable if students are referred to the, the, the welfare section that when the students would have returned to school that we'll have a better student coming to, to attend school. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. 
The Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union will be writing to the Chief Justice to request a prompt hearing date for their case. The union is fighting for severance to be paid to redundant Wales sugar workers. Sandy Ramatar with the details. Wales Sugar Factory was closed permanently in 2016 after Minister of State Joseph Harmon dubbed it as an economic nightmare. Some of the workers from the estate were offered jobs at Eiffel Estate whilst some were made redundant. However, some of the workers that were offered jobs at Iflot refused to work for various reasons, which includes the long travel. The Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union is fighting for the same workers to be granted severance pay. To the union's dismay, the Ghana Sugar Corporation refuses to pay severance, claiming that the persons refuse job offers, disallowing them to collect severance. It is against this backdrop that the union took the matter to the court, but there have been no scheduled date for the hearing. So says the president of the GAO, Kobal Chand. We are, we are, we are hoping that the, the court will give it priority in the sense that, I don't know in the queue at what point it is, but we are seeking to have the Chief Justice, who we understand assigned matter, to take into account um, the, the large number of people who depend so much on this money and their family, and to give it priority treatment. It's now one year since we have, um, we have been seeking the court intervention in this matter. The case is seeking to ensure 350 redundant sugar workers receive their severance packages. The workers who have been made redundant in December 2016 has overtime protests for their rights to be heard, but to no avail. Chan says the union is hopeful the court can direct a hearing for the case to ensure workers are paid their money. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Still ahead, Chairman of Region 5 has had it with issues at the RDC, intends to put a halt to all of them at the next meeting. Stay tuned. Introducing the new Softex toilet tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. When reliability is not an option, you need a supplier you can trust. This skilled technician depends on Forfan and Mendes for heavy-duty tools. This landscaper earns a living using still equipment. High rates of production and recovery lead to this sawmiller trusting his operation to wood miser. Mothers trust the water filtration systems for the health of their families. Thanks to the automatic backup systems, you'll never be left in the dark again. Forfan and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. Slimjet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at Slimjet, City Mall, second floor. Introducing a new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. You're tuned to News Update. Welcome back. 
As issues within Mahaika Burby's Regional Democratic Council continues to plague the development of the region, the chairman will be moving to put a halt to the pending issues at the next meeting on March 22. Here is more from Sandy Ramatar. While the council has been welcomed with successful meetings during the year, Kia Slooms as a chairman and regional executive officer, RU, are at loggerheads. The new issue erupted after the RU allegedly barged into the RDC's boardroom, disrupting a meeting being held by the chairman and allegedly asked him to leave. Chairman of the region, Vic Chan Ramphal, was at the time having a discussion with security guards who were seeking his representation on a matter. The REO wasn't um, pleased or satisfied with that meeting, came to disrupt. Mm -hmm. So he ordered the guys out of the boardroom along with um, myself and we peacefully vacated the boardroom. But that is to show disrespect that some leaders have for people. Apart from the usual disruptions, Ramphal is also alleging that his resources are being limited. He blames this for his inability to visit residents, which in effect stymies development in the region as the residents' cries are not being heard. I believe it's because of the engaging the guard and uh, um, the REO came in for a lot of blows from the same guard. So he, 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 um, not pleased with that, and I see this as, as being um, one of, of vengeance. Even though there were not any recent disturbances in the last two meetings, the chairman says the engagements were not fruitful. The council was faced with five months of continuous disruptions at their meetings last year, which is said to be instigated by APNU councillors. Sandy Ramutar. For MTV's News Update. The Department of Public Service launched Guyana's scholarship website, which is expected to improve scholarship administration. According to Permanent Secretary of the Department, Reginald Brotherson, the website will select and award persons with academic scholarships. Here is Yanis Abrams. The Ministry of the Presidency, through its Department of Public Service, launched Guyana's first scholarship website. Permanent Secretary of the Department, Reginald Brotherson, related to stakeholders, the website was designed for prospective scholars and to enable Guyanese to have the opportunity to train in their desired academic field. Brotherson mentioned it is the government's duty to fix the poor system. A systematic approach to training in 2018 and beyond has created recognition of understanding that the plan for Guyana's overall development must allow youths the opportunity to further their education. It must be noted that our ties with universities in Asia, other European countries and Cuba through bilateral agreements and arrangements would remain enforced and further strengthened. We have developed an index of universities we hope to target and to enable the Department of Public Service to effect wise, forthright, and informed decisions in granting scholarship awards. Advisor within the Department of Public Service, Vincent Alexander, states the website is to continue the promise of the government for a better life for Guyanese. Alexander emphasized on an attempt to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the ministry since this is a part of good governance. And so what we've seen today is also an attempt to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of the work of the department. All of that is a part of good governance. Hopefully, our cost of delivery will go down. Hopefully, citizens will have greater and easier access to our services. In this instance, the service of administering the award of scholarships. And concomitantly, that will be more effective meaning that we need to 
achieve the objective. Not only the reward in scholarships, but the reward in the manner that is, as I said earlier, transparent, open, and providing for our citizens to realize their entitlement. From 2015 to 2017, the government has awarded 232 persons scholarships to study internationally, while 1,031 were awarded to study in Guyana. The Public Service Permanent Secretary stated that from the period 2013 to 2015, 138 scholarships were granted within all 10 administrative regions. It was also announced that in 2018, the department will give fully funded scholarships to recipients. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The government's current work on a green state development strategy, pitched as a national plan important to the nation's development, is currently receiving positive interest from those in society. Lashana Gomes can use follow this story. According to Environment Stakeholder Management Coordinator Actin of the Department of Environment, Aricha Ford, while the concept of living the greenway has been one of the government's main forum, the concept has always been a part of the Guyanese way of life. Scale it up. Um, there have been many initiatives on the national level, but we really want to scale up moving to a green economy. Green is, is not the color. It is a color. But we're not talking about painting buildings green or those kind of things. Um, it's a concept. It's a concept that says we can have environmental protection, economic development, and social equity and well-being all happening at the same time. And so that is what we are aiming for. Ford related with three green conversations already being undertaken in both Georgetown and in Bartica, the role of the multi-stakeholder groups along with the Department of Environment is to ensure the message identifiable with the green conversation continues in other parts of the country. She related while there are those who may disagree with the choice to bring international experts on board to discuss the green concept, it is the view of the Department of Environment to have experienced persons to assist Guyana. Um, we're working collectively to bring in international experts and I know persons have a, a sort of an issue with bringing in persons when we have local authorities or, or you know what they think are local authorities to talk to us about different aspects of the green economy but our idea behind this is to have persons who would have already had the experience with achieving a green economy really share their knowledge and experience as to how we as a country can do the same thing. The last green conversation held under the theme Green Jobs and Sustainable Businesses saw a massive turnout of persons from the business community, stakeholders, students of the University of Guyana, and other green development enthusiasts. According to Ford, the feedback has been tremendously positive in that many interesting ideas and questions were posed regarding the entire process of what it means to live in a green society, where living the green way becomes the recognizable way of life. As for where next the green conversation will continue, Ford indicated that a choice currently lies between Linden and New Amsterdam, Burbies. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. In recognition of the 31st anniversary of the Guyana Association of Women Lawyers, an essay competition has been launched which is expected to target youths from ages 11 to 18. According to committee member of the essay competition, Beverly Bishop Chetty, this is to raise awareness of the oil and gas sector. Details in this report. The Guyana Association of Women Lawyers, in commemoration of their 31st anniversary, has launched an essay competition for students from Forms 1 to 6. Member of the association, Beverly Bishop Chetty, related to media operatives that the essay will be based on Guyana's upcoming oil and gas sector. Well, the theme of the essay is the reality of the oil and the gas industry in Guyana. And we believe that at this time, 
the oil and gas industry and implications of its existence in this country are topical issues and pertinent issues for everyone including our children and that our children need to be sensitized on that issue. Students are expected to have an acknowledgement slip stamped or signed from their head teacher to confirm enrollment and level of the institution. However, attached to the essay will be an entry form that we encourage participants that participants are required to uplift and that entry form will contain particulars for the participant. The entry forms can be uplifted at the office of the president of the Ghana Association of Women Lawyers and that will be at Equity Chambers on Rob Street just above Scotia Bank. The Ghana Association of Women Lawyers was founded in April 1987 with the primary aim of giving legal advice and assistance to women in society. Its motto is Women Supporting Justice and Equality. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for regional and international news of the Guyana Stock Exchange as well as your bridge schedule. so much Windex for clean windows, all them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Hey girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Need a vacation? Thinking of leaving the country? Then visit Millennia Travel Agency and book your flight today. We are located on the top floor in the City Mall at Campan Region Streets. We book flights for Caribbean Airlines, Suriname Airways, Copa Airlines, Liat, Fly Jamaica and all major airlines. We also book hotel and cruise packages. Visit or call us on 225-7354 for more information. Millennia Travel Agency for all your travel needs. Excellent Creole dishes. Fresh bread and pastries. Yes. Breakfast and lunch available fresh Mondays through Fridays. We open 7 a.m. Delivery available. Wholesale breads and pastries available soon. Call 219-5003. With three locations. Lot 5 to Ennis Street, Sophia. 36 Durban Street, GPO Building. Dion's Delight Catering Service. We cater for all occasions. Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Here's what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on March 7. The man accused of murdering 14-year-old Malika Hamilton of Ants Grove East Coast Demerara 
On Wednesday morning, had the capital offense discharged against him by Magistrate Peter Hugh at the Vigilance Magistrate Court due to lack of evidence. It is alleged that Alvin Reed, called Satan of Ansgrove East Coast Demerara, between August 8 and August 9, 2016, at Hope East Coast Demerara, murdered Hamilton. Hamilton's body was found on August 9 in the Hope Canal, and it was initially assumed by many that the teen had died from drowning. However, family members had been adamant that the young girl's demise was as a result of foul play. Pathologist Dr. Nihal Singh had conducted a post-mortem examination on the teen's body a few days after its discovery in the canal, and it was revealed that Hamilton had died of asphyxiation. She was also said to have suffered from blunt trauma to her head and compression injury to her neck. Meanwhile, 32-year-old Rajan Dindial of Diamond New Scheme East Bangdamarara was on Wednesday committed to stand trial at the High Court for the murder of Alston Henry, who was beaten to death at a wedding. The preliminary inquiry into the murder of Henry concluded before Magistrate Judy Latchman at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. According to reports, Dindial and Henry were at a wedding celebration when an argument ensued between them after Henry pushed down a portable toilet and refused to pick it up. The court heard that Dindial became annoyed and armed himself with a wooden food paddle and dealt the victim several lashes about his body. Henry fell unconscious and was rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. And finally, a 20-year-old man was on Wednesday placed before City Magistrate for Bayo Azor for a failed robbery which was committed on a police officer. Gavin Alley of Fort Street, Albertown, denied that on March 1 at Brickdam, while being in the company of others, attempted to rob Police Constable Sham Bihari. With no objections raised by the prosecutor, Ali was released on $25,000 bail and the matter is adjourned until April 4. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 763. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbor Bridge schedule. Rap is next. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. The circle starts with solid support and a smile. This is real life with its ups, and it's downs. This is going the extra mile. And the feeling you get when you can help someone along their journey. Through the twists and turns, we're here. This is Western Union, making sure your support reaches its destination. This is Western Union, moving money for better. Relationship difficulties, depression, family challenges, Grief and loss are some situations in our lives that can cause us to feel unlike ourselves. 
Are you facing any such situations? Have you considered counseling? It is time you talk to a professional counselor. Let's talk. Call the helpline on 223-0001, 223-0009, or 223-0818 to talk to a helpline counselor near you today. Your emotions are important. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. As always, I'm your host Rajesh Lakan along with Rochelle and she will be telling us ways you can make a smart investment by purchasing an Epson EcoTank printer right here at Star Computer. Now Rochelle, Star Computer is known for the HP brand. Tell us about this new line. Well, let me just first start by saying I know that we're all accustomed to HP printers. Uh -huh. So we do have our new line, our new product, which is Epson, H, uh, sorry, Epson printers that are out. You see, I'm so accustomed with the HP, but trust me, the Epson is a really, really good brand. It's actually a smart investment in the long run because some advantages of it is that it does not work with cartridges. It works with bottle of inks and in each one of those bottle of inks you're going to get 70 ml in contrast to an HP cartridge you can get about 5 to 7 ml so that's saving you 80 percent on inks right there so that's one of the really main good advantage of having the Epson um, printer. And who would you recommend to purchase one of these printers? Well I think it's both suited for home and office because of course some people at home they print a lot schoolwork assignment you know whatever your needs are when you buy this printer because the ink cartridge is so uh reliable and so uh affordable and it's going to last you so long you won't be running back to the store to buy inks it saves you the frustration of buying inks all the time these epson printers are very standard just like the hp because we know we're accustomed to having the photocopier the scanner the printer, you know, the ADF, whatever features. These do come like that. We do have different uh, models in them. So whatever is suited for your purpose, I'm sure you'll find one. After sale and warranty is available? Yes, of course, we do have after sale and warranty available on these printers. So of course, you'd have ease of mind knowing you're getting a quality product. And a big question for us in local as writer, right, I want to know, is there any special on this printer? Well, as well as I mentioned, it's a new product line here at Star Computers, so we're trying to introduce it to, to the public because we know you're accustomed to the HP. So, uh, yes, because it's new, so these prices are very affordable, so you have to come down and check them out. And apart from the printer, what else happened here? Well, we always do have fantastic deals on. Right now, we do have it on the computers, but you have to come down to check that out. And also, you can like us on Facebook and you'll see all the deals happening there. So thank you, Rochelle. And that's all we have for you in this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. Do join us next week, Wednesday, for another edition. 
That's all we have for you in our news class tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Over two dozen persons homeless as fire raises four buildings in Kitty. Government is ensuring all juvenile correctional facilities are properly functioning. ExxonMobil decides to explain why Guyana will receive a 2% royalty. And in court, Alvin Reed of Freedom of Murder Charge. The news cast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcast later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Thursday, March 8. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.